Good afternoon, my name is Amr Zeki. I'm an assistant professor at the University of California in Davis, uh, in Sacramento, California. Um, and I study uh, obstructive airway diseases, severe asthma, COPD, and overlap syndrome. Asthma COPD overlap is really not a new idea. It's been around at least since the 60s. Um, and it's this idea of um, what do we call asthma, what do we call COPD? Um, and this recently has resurged as an important um, uh, area because as precision medicine and, and phenotyping uh, advances and people try to understand these diseases better from a molecular standpoint, they realize that the the clinical or physiological definitions alone uh, aren't good enough and in fact a lot of patients on that spectrum of airway disease uh, overlap. It's often hard for the physician to distinguish who's an asthmatic and who's a COPD patient unless they have frank emphysema. Uh, and so it is not entirely a new idea but it's been given a name, um, asthma COPD overlap or asthma COPD overlap syndrome, ACOS. We still don't have a, a definition that uh, is scientifically based, we do have a description that at least identifies who is an overlapper, but um, there's a lot of still very basic work that needs to be done. For instance, we don't know if overlappers are simply patients with features of both disease or if it's in fact a, a, a new phenomenon um, or an aspect of chronic airway disease we never really truly appreciated. So it's become a very hot area, but we need, still need a lot more science to understand it better. It's by simply identifying overlappers, we've discovered that they are actually sicker uh, than lone asthma or lone COPD. They have more severe disease, more severe exacerbations, and more frequent exacerbations. Certainly if you compare it to COPD alone, that's the best data we have. The idea of identifying them uh, um, is, is um, important because at least you've alerted yourself to a type of patient who has a phenotype that uh, is going to be sicker than the typical asthmatic or COPD patient. There is some controversy regarding that because some papers, although they're a minority, show that they're not necessarily worse than asthma alone or COPD alone, or at least may in some, some reports, maybe less than 5% of the time are actually slightly better. My, my bias and my interpretation having taken care of these patients is that the overlappers actually tend to be sicker. They have worse lung function. We've, we've looked at it in our own clinic. And what's interesting about them is they seem to overlap with cardiovascular disease and, and other um, metabolic syndrome comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, um, cardiovascular disease uh, as well, uh, and obesity. So ACOS may simply be sort of a marker of that more um, uh, metabolic type patient um, and, and someone who uh, uh, has more fixed airflow obstruction. It'll impact therapy in the sense that if they are truly worse and sicker in terms of their um, frequency of disease and exacerbations and the severity, then identifying them early and treating them more aggressively certainly should translate into better outcomes, uh, reduce symptoms, less hospitalizations. Um, and that's how, you know, designing well-controlled trials and comparing them to um, uh, not just normals, but also pure emphysematous patients or pure asthmatics, I think was going to yield a lot of information. I think this is a temporary phase, having this ACOS label. The future of airway disease is actually going to be different. Th these labels eventually, I think, will be antiquated and we will simply have OAD, obstructive airway disease. And then we're going to have very, um, uh, very precise ways of using genomics, uh, metabolomics, um, uh, more advanced phenotyping characteristics to actually be more confident as to what endotype or what actual underlying pathologic mechanism they have because that will dictate therapy. So it'll be less important whether they have asthma or COPD, it'll be more important uh, um, what is the, the underlying mechanism that's causing the airway disease so we can actually give specific biologics and therapies that target that or a cocktail of inhalers and treatments that target that, the underlying process rather than just a label, which is what we have right now. So hopefully in the future, we'll, as we gain more knowledge, we'll have much better therapies. Well, first of all, we need an ACOS definition that people agree upon on an international level. Um, and then once we have that, we need clinical trials that specifically look at the overlappers compared to asthma alone or COPD alone, and of course, healthy controls uh, if, if uh, uh, pertinent. And um, over the next decade, hopefully, we'll have a lot more information in terms of specific therapies if we're successful. At, um, you know, uh, developing a definition.